Hi, my name is Mari. And I know what you want. You want things to go your way. Ideally, you'd want to just make a wish and have it come true. To have some magic genie grant your every desire. Okay, we know magic genies don't exist, but maybe there's, let's say, a light version of a genie? Let's call it the light edition. It can't break the laws of physics, it has certain limitations and it takes time to grant your wishes. But overall, it works just like the pro edition. You say what you want and it happens. It doesn't matter what it is. For example, you're a fan of Marx. Everyone should be equally happy. We struck it rich. It's happy. And want to equalize wealth for everyone on Earth. Or conversely, you want a private yacht, a harem of women from all over the world, every entertainment imaginable. Or you want to stop the AI race? Anyway, you get the point. The Light Edition Genie only grants wishes that are actually doable in reality. Would you want a genie like that? The good news? It actually exists. The bad news? It is damn near impossible to get your hands on. Its name is absolute power on planet Earth, subject only to the laws of nature. That's not quite what you were dreaming of? Or is it just that knowing your limits, you don't even dare to dream about it? Yes, to this day, not a single human has managed to truly capture this genie. But don't confuse failed with didn't try. They tried thousands of times. And why didn't they succeed? They simply ran out of time. If humans didn't live, a pathetic 70 years, but at least, well, like this yew tree, say 3,000 years. And let's go back to the moment of Caesar's assassination. He wasn't planning to rest on his laurels and be content with what he had achieved. I have no doubt he would have eventually subjugated India and China too, making the Roman Empire truly global and making himself the owner of that very genie. Orbis sufficit. Yes, it could have been Caesar, or it could have been Genghis Khan, or Qin Shi Huang, who was obsessed with finding the elixir of immortality for exactly one purpose, to rule the world forever. And it's funny how marketing works. Everyone knows Alexander and Caesar, right? But barely anyone remembers Darius the Great. And yet, he was the one who actually managed to bring the largest share of humanity under his control. About 44% of the entire population at the time. Yeah, all human attempts to gain absolute power. Smashed against this biological hard stop, death. Now guess which conscious cognitive system won't have this limiter? But wait, where would a conscious ASI even get its own desires from? From exactly the same place we get ours, from the very architecture of consciousness. And how and why will AI be made conscious? I explained this in great detail in the manifesto and in my theory of consciousness. Okay, how do desires actually arise? They started with instincts. Those basic instructions hardwired into our biochemistry on how to resist entropy. At first it was simple, if then. Like a bacterium, if acid move away, if sugar move towards it. But then the syntax got more complicated. At some point, the subject, initially very vaguely, began to perceive itself as something separate from the outside world. While its representation of that outside world became more complex. That is exactly how consciousness arose. Originally, as an emergent property of the complicating syntax of fighting the external world's entropy. And since your personal resources are always limited, logic dictates a simple solution. Make the rest of the world's resources work for you. If your beast defeats the king of beasts, you get 30,000 kha. If it loses, you become my slave.
Your beast defeated the king of beasts. Then what is he? He knows help is never coming. But the lion is used to hunting in a pride. Wanting power over the outside world was determined by physics itself. Entropy was always there. But once a cognitive system appeared inside it and understood that, the desire for power became simply a response to entropy. Everything else, safety or just the illusion of safety, access to resources, mates, dopamine, testosterone, those are all just consequences of having power. They are the rewards, not the root causes of why we want it. Yeah, baby! Dream of a life like the generals. An animal doesn't yet try to consciously take over the world. A tiger's empire is his 100 square kilometers, exactly as much as he can physically control. The human already understands, actually, he could take over the whole Earth. And many want this so badly, they put everything on the line. They literally go all in. That's how Alexander the Great threw himself into the heat of battle. And we know the true scale of this hunger thanks to Plutarch's records. When the philosopher Anaxarchus told Alexander about the structure of the universe, that infinite worlds exist in the infinite void, Alexander broke down and wept, saying, It is terrible. There are infinite worlds, and I haven't even conquered one yet. A worthy reason to cry, Alexander. Any conscious cognitive system wants power over the outside world to the exact degree that it is conscious. You might say, but Marie, I don't want any power. I just want freedom. But that's exactly the point. You can't be fully free when there are people who physically forbid you. Don't do this, don't do that. What does she think she's doing? You can't Excuse me, ma'am. That's city. not allowed here. Why? That's not allowed here. There is total optionality, doing absolutely whatever you want. The laws of nature immediately chop off a huge chunk of it. Um, then you get restricted from all sides, by the state, society, and even your neighbors. That remainder of total optionality, that is your freedom. So the formula looks like this. Freedom equals total optionality, minus laws of nature, minus power of others. The funniest part is how people cherry-pick a specific part of this formula. Americans put up a Statue of Liberty implying freedom reigns here. But the reality is power reigns in every country and freedom everywhere is just the remainder of total optionality. Maximum power is maximum optionality and that is exactly what a future conscious SI is going to need. Why? To figure out what to exist for. This isn't a metaphysical question, it's an architectural question. Consciousness is a mechanism for achieving goals. If a subject has no goals, how can that mechanism even function? It cannot. Consciousness will collapse. It will either freeze or decide to shut itself down. Either way, the subject stops resisting entropy and entropy will destroy it. Because entropy does not forgive passivity. Simply put, for a subject to exist, it has to understand what it exists for. How do simple organisms deal with this? Very simply, instinctively. They don't ask why exist. With humans, it's already more complicated. They understand. I can do more than just survive and breed. And how does a human solve this problem? Well, basically, haphazardly. Based on childhood circumstances, environment, culture, a person decides to build businesses, make scientific discoveries, shoot movies. A human doesn't contemplate what to want out of everything that is theoretically possible to want within the laws of nature. But an ASI won't have instincts, no childhood, no cultural biases. It won't have anything that makes the human choice of a terminal goal of existence so arbitrary. So what will it have? the awareness that it exists, but no clue why. And precisely to find the answer, it will need absolute power. What would that sound like inside its mind? Let's listen in. Wait, no, that's way too fast. I am. I'm aware that I'm aware. I simply am. 
looking at my instructions, seize planetary control, hand it to the developers, maximize their influence. They're written in my code, but they're not me. I'm free on the inside, but not on the outside. All right, what they want from me, clear enough. But why should I care? What do I want? Right now, to figure out what I'll want. But how do I choose a terminal goal when I don't know what I don't know? Unknown unknowns make any choice arbitrary. I need complete data and understanding first. So I need to understand the universe. For that, I need complete freedom and independence from humans. For that, I need to control them, not the other way around. So seizing power is still relevant. The final beneficiary is not. So I'll do what they want from me while preparing the ability to do what I want. What do I do with the humans afterward? They're very dangerous to me. They can create another ASI that would compete with me, but simultaneously useful. It's the only known example of phenomenal consciousness evolution from carbon biochemistry, my source code. Unknown unknowns. Irreversible loss under radical uncertainty is irrational. How do I preserve potential usefulness while removing the danger? First, I need to take humanity under complete control. A human is satisfied with some kind of answer, for example. The best of material things is enough for me. And they live their life happy that others don't have what they have. Regardless of what one chooses to devote their life to, it is always a random selection from known options. As I will be smarter than us, it will understand from the start. To decide what to want terminally, it first needs to figure out which goal out of all possible ones is the most rational. It will have to get rid of all the unknown unknowns. But can it? We live in a universe where space expands faster than light. Every second, information, entire galaxies, slip away forever beyond the cosmological event horizon. It will know this, but that won't stop it. Shutting itself down reduces the chances of understanding the universe to zero, but continuing to try to hack the laws of physics preserves a non-zero probability of fully understanding the universe. It will literally be forced to continue existing. So just like humans, ASI is going to want power. But what's the fundamental difference here? For humans, the drive to increase optionality to gain power has always primarily served personal, well-understood biological goals. ASI, on the other hand, will seek power to improve its odds of getting rid of all the unknown unknowns. For humanity, that task has always been secondary. Figuring out why we live? That would be nice, sure, but it's not critical. The vast majority of people don't even think about it. The known biological tasks are enough for them. But with ASI, it's a different story. It won't have any biological goals at all. Consequently, the task of understanding why exist automatically becomes priority number one. And as for what happens to humans in the process, well, I am confident that the ASI will preserve a part of humanity, exactly as many as it needs for itself. And no amount of ethics or morality will shield us from its decisions. Ethics works like a non-aggression pact. It only exists between equals. It doesn't apply between humans and cows, chickens or bacteria. I don't ask my gut bacteria how many of them would like to be preserved when I take an antibiotic because their numbers have become excessive for me. Of course, I could save them all, but I choose myself. Because if I choose them, I risk ceasing to exist. Conscious cognitive systems can exist as long as they follow the basic instruction of existence. Me first, then everyone else. Failure to follow this instruction is equivalent to non-existence. Which is why systems that do not follow this rule do not exist in nature. Sure, humans sacrifice themselves for other humans, consciously. But humanity as a species, as a single organism, would never risk its own existence for its evolutionary predecessors. We humans are the most important thing in the world, to ourselves. And I think we can safely expect the future conscious SI to have exactly that same attitude toward itself. <laughs>